So another day and another solar charge controller and another EP Ever EP Solar charge controller. This is the uh, ViewStar range. It's the 10 amp version, and um, it's got a multifunction LCD, a three-stage PWM charge, uh, user programmable for battery types and load control. Uh, the battery temperature compensation, real-time energy statistics. Uh, extensive electronic protections and common positive grounding design and I couldn't really not review this as this is one of the latest products from the EP Ever uh, series and uh, we've done quite a few EP Solar reviews in the past so inside the box we have a manual and the product itself and a certificate, quality control passed, and uh, there it is. And uh, first impressions are, it's uh, quite slim, thin, um, but everything's set out correctly. And uh, you'll notice that I quite like this about the EP Solar range at the moment. Um, they actually indicate it's common positive on the uh, printing on the case because the positive is connected to the positive is connected to the positive. So as I said, this is a VS1024A. Um, now the 10 stands for 10 amps and the 24 stands for the fact that this can be used on a 24 volt system but it can also be used on a 12 volt system. Uh, like here in the shed. Um, on the top we've got that model number again, 12 and 24 volts, 10 amps and presumably that's a serial number. Metal back and the same sort of uh, air flow vent there as on the uh, LS1024B. Uh, the six connectors there and of course the temperature sensor connector there as well and some little holes there I'm guessing that's either for ventilation but they're quite small so perhaps that's to get some air into the unit uh, for the internal temperature the screen itself I think is exactly the same as the one on the Tracer A MPPT charge controller series and it's certainly got the same button arrangement um, but these buttons are blue and on the tracer they're orange and if we compare it in size to the LS1024B that we uh, saw the other week um, I guess actually it's not any much slimmer is it but it, it did feel it when I got it out and it's also a bit taller to make room for the screen. Anyway, without further ado, let's have a look inside. So it does two screws there at the top and the back plate comes out easily. Uh, it's of reasonable thickness. Um, it will dissipate a bit of heat, I guess. This is only a 10 amp, remember, so uh, it's not too bad. And we've got the usual arrangement from EP Solar of some N-channel MOSFETs here and using this insulating um, heat transfer tape we can see the back-to-back n-channel -back MOSFETs there for the solar switching and the single MOSFET for the load switching on the left hand side. Now usually these boards come out pretty easily and uh, this one is no different but it is attached obviously to the front where the screen is and it's very much like every other EP Solar charge controller I've been inside. Interestingly, those four uh, pinholes that we saw earlier there in the case actually go through to these ports here, marked T, G, R, and V. And uh, at this point, I have no idea what they are, but presumably. That's for some serial functionality, something like that. So we have the 
fuse here on the main board again soldered straight onto the board which is always a shame I'd rather that was user changeable it's a 25 amp fuse that's fairly normal on these EP Solar 10 amp uh, charge controllers um, possibly a bit high but uh, I'd always recommend putting an external fuse on here anyway the caps are rated 35 volts so that should be happy with the 24 volt battery system if that's what you choose to use the microcontroller up there and uh, yeah that's pretty much it a couple of low value resistors shunt resistors uh, to be able to determine how much current is coming in from the solar panel and how much current is being used by the load so pretty much as expected on the inside um, and that screen uh, is connected there there doesn't seem to be anything else on that PCB just a couple of buttons and the screen um, no I best take that out haven't I yeah pretty much as expected just the LCD and two buttons there is an IC under there that just controls the LCD um, so I'll put it back together now and we'll plug it in okay so let me just explain what's going on here um, I'm using this as my battery it's actually some capacitors but effectively this is just a 12 volt lead acid battery for this test uh, this meter here is connected to the battery we can see that it's at 12 and a half volts at the moment there's no current flowing at the moment because the solar charger isn't on. Uh, in the background here I've got um, some cables. Um, these come from a 50 watt monocrystalline uh, solar panel which is on my shed roof. Uh, the weather's not brilliant today, it's a bit overcast uh, so we won't see anything like 50 watts I wouldn't have thought today. Um, but let's see what this solar controller does. Let's turn it on. So it's booted up and the screen's nice and clear, no volts on the solar or amps because there's nothing connected at the moment. Remember you should always connect your battery first, then your solar. Um, it's showing that the battery's quite low, the battery's 12.5 volts, well I'm reading 12.4. Um, the solar charge controller itself is pulling 16 milliamps there, uh, which isn't too bad. Um, no load obviously on the solar charge controller uh, so let's plug in some solar and see if we can get some energy back into these cells so if I connect my positive and then the negative and as you can see now the graphic on the screen has changed we've got a sun symbol on the solar panels and energy is moving from the left to the right so we've got solar voltage coming in uh, to the battery and we can see actually we're pulling 600 milliamps from the solar panel uh, 7.4 watts there briefly and the solar panel is at 17 volts and we're pulling 300 milliamps here uh, it is tumbling as that battery charges up we're now up to 14.3 volts on the battery 14.4 the solar charge controller claims just putting 100 milliamps in well yeah just about 100 milliamps going into that battery it thinks the battery temperature is 25 degrees that's incorrect because uh, the external temperature sensor isn't plugged in. Uh, in fact let me get one of those and plug it in. So I've taken the temperature sensor from my EP Tracer MPPT charge controller, it's the same one I believe. So if I plug that in, now it says the battery temperature is 14 degrees which I think is more accurate today. Um, so the battery is up to 14 and a half volt presumably this is doing an absorb charge to start with because this is the first charge it's doing I've now connected some cables to the load terminal and it comes out here and uh, let's just turn that on yep yeah, that loads definitely working there flooding the camera 
just leave it there off to one side uh, and we we'll should be able to see that we're getting 1.8 amps now from the uh, solar panel as some of that energy is going straight from the solar panel through to the load the battery's at 14.6 yeah 14 and a half here that's not too bad no energy going into the battery anymore though uh, we're pulling too much on the load Battery is at 14 degrees C, the load is at 1.7 amps and uh, that's probably about right, it's a 20 watt incandescent bulb um, so if I press that I believe that turns off the load and we can now see that that battery graphic is getting higher, the state of charge um, is creeping up so the only thing we haven't tested is the menu system and by pressing menu you can move through the various different parameters a bit more quickly uh, to see the one you, that you want. Uh, but then you get these extra ones that I've just gone past uh, which are 117 if you hold set on there we can adjust this code and this is the amount of hours after dusk that the uh, load will stay on so that will be for three hours after dusk four five etc etc 117 i believe is on all the time so that's how i tend to have my solar charge controllers so there's mine set to 117 and then the other area we can change is the battery and if we press and hold set on the battery type we get SEL, which is sealed, we get GEL, gel batteries, or we get flooded, FLD, flooded cells. So those are your three options on this charge controller. Um, I'm going to set mine to gel. So with the case open again and my oscilloscope attached to the MOSFET of the solar side, uh, we can see that the battery uh, voltage was 14.2 volts so it's fully charged and we can see that the MOSFET is fully off um, because the battery is so well charged if we turn the load on we can see that the MOSFET is now fully on and we saw the adjustment as the battery level came down and as I turn that load off the pulse width goes to something very small until the battery gets up to that 14.2 level again and it can completely turn off the solar panel so this really is pulse width modulation well I've been really impressed by the products coming out of uh, EP Solar especially the ones under this EP Ever brand uh, so far and I think this is another good control I think the screen's really clear uh, the menu system's fairly easy to use you can't edit too much in here but you do get the three battery options and you do get that on off timer uh, selection as well um, so it's a decent solar charge controller PWM solar charge controller it's got that handy temperature function there and that interesting um, connector in there that might be worth some investigation um, comparing it to the LS 1024B uh, these products are available on eBay both at almost exactly the same price uh, about £17 25 US dollars and if you want to do more with your system then this LS1024 is probably the better one to go for as long as you've got the external screen or the uh, USB cable because you can change an awful lot more on this one, you can change the battery parameters, you can turn the load on and off from remotely, those sorts of things. But if you're just wanting a simple system, but you're interested in how it's performing, then this is a really good option. Which one would I go for? Well, I'm a bit of a stats geek, so I'd go for the LS, the, uh, the Landstar series. Uh, for all that extra information and the graphs you can generate and that sort of thing. But starting out in solar for the first time, I think this is a really good controller uh, and it works really well. So hopefully you've enjoyed this review. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Subscribe if you can and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.